although most of the province is fully vaccinated, Ontario's top doctor is calling on those who have not received a shot to get one or risk getting sick. And it comes as experts warn of a possible inevitable third wave. Joining us now for the first time on Breakfast Television is Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore. Good morning to you, Dr. Moore. Good morning, Melanie. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have you here. I don't know if we can still call you the new Chief Medical Officer of Health, but we'll go with that. Uh, we, we're going to get right down to business. There was a lot to talk about yesterday in your news conference. Um, you sort of changed the target for, for the province of Ontario and what is needed to reach that herd immunity, or at least for us and as a province, to reopen completely. Uh, you alluded to the goal of vaccinating roughly 90% of the population. Can you clarify, are you talking 90% of the population double vaxxed? Yeah, so for uh, our fight against COVID, and particularly the strain of Delta, uh, we really need the highest immunization rate we can achieve in Ontario if we want a safe uh, reopening in, in September. Um, uh, and uh, our modelers uh, at Public Health Ontario have told us around 90% will really keep Delta subdued, allow us to have safe opening of our schools, colleges, universities, businesses. Uh, and I think that is a that's achievable in Ontario, but it takes everyone to work together to try to get that high immunization protection protection uh, against the Delta strain, which we're seeing take off in the United Kingdom, uh, in the southern United States. Indeed, we're seeing those infections go up, those rates, and we don't want to see that here happening at home. As mentioned here, roughly 79% of those 12 and up have received one dose of a vaccine, 62% with two. How long do you think it could take if we do reach that 90%? Uh, this could be months, no? Yeah, th this last 20% of individuals um, may take us a little extra time. So certainly the keen individuals have come forward and gotten immunized. Over 90% of doctors are immunized with two doses now. Uh, and and uh, the medical professions are leading the way uh, on having some of the highest immunization rates of, of all of the professions. That's a keen endorsement of immunization in Ontario. I'm so happy for the Ontario Medical Association of Physicians to have achieved that rate. We need all healthcare workers coming forward getting immunized. And we need very high coverage uh, in our community. So anyone that's hesitant, that, that thought they'd put it off, now is the time. We've got around six weeks uh, before school starts, colleges, universities, and a lot of businesses will be bringing their staff back. And in those six weeks, uh, you need to get your first dose, then wait 28 days to get your second dose, uh, and then 14 days for your immunity to build. And as a result, really this week is key uh, and the next subsequent weeks to uh, allow individuals to come to our clinics. You can go to your pharmacist, your primary care provider. The mass immunization clinics will be remaining open. The supply of mRNA vaccines has never been so good. We got 1.2 million doses of Pfizer this week, um, and, and we're getting another 1.5 of Pfizer next week. So really, there's no excuse. The clinics are open. Uh, there's plenty of appointments. If you have a late appointment for September or October, consider rebooking to get your immunization uh, 28 days after your first dose so that we are all working together to prevent Delta from coming back into the fall. Dr. Moore, we've had the conversation all morning long about the idea of incentives. What say you when it comes to offering incentives to get those who might be sitting on the fence to get vaccinated? Well, it's one tool in the toolbox to try to get people to, to come out. And for some, we may need to. Uh, and I know in, in Kingston, where I have been working, we've been giving taxi chits to allow people to come in and get immunized if they're having any accessibility issues. So in, in a way, that's an incentive to come in and get immunized. Uh, I think the health units across Ontario are working aggressively to have as many strategies in play as possible. I hear they're going to beaches, they're going to splash pads, they're, they're going to malls uh, and, and having mobile clinics. So they're, they're working all out, and we need the community to come forward as well. Okay, so we, we could see some things in specific public health units, but not provincial-wide, nothing like the million-dollar lotteries or anything like that that we've been seeing in the States. Yeah, nothing's been contemplated as of yet, but you know, if we're not hitting our targets, uh, I don't think anything's off, off the uh, desk just yet. A lot of questions we're getting from our viewers, Dr. Moore, about back to school. You mentioned in your presser yesterday... Um, we heard from the science advisory table saying, here's what we'd like to do. We'd like to get everyone back in school, but there are some policies dependent on community transmission, whether or not masking is in place, whether or not there's cohorting. What do you envision that needs to happen over the next six, seven weeks before we go back to school? Do you think you're going to see masking? Do you think kids are, are realistically going back? 
Well, I do like the science table report and I want to thank them for all the work. Pediatricians from across Ontario have come forward and given us advice. We're reviewing it as we speak. Uh, it is a risk-based approach. So if there's low risk of transmission, they're recommending no masking. Uh, and if it's a moderate risk or severe risk, they're recommending uh, cohorting and masking and distancing. So we'll follow that risk-based approach and we'll review it with the Ministry of Education. Uh, I just, uh, I think a lot of the advice in it is very, very helpful and is based in best evidence. So we'll review that. Uh, we still have seven weeks and Ontarians have been great. We've been able to keep our rate of infection low in Ontario at present, which is brilliant. Um, we need to have people continue to come forward, get tested if they have signs or symptoms of COVID. We need public health to continue to do the great work in case and contact management. And that'll give us the safest opening in September. I, I would love uh, for all of our schools to uh, open safely. And uh, obviously all public health want the schools to stay open uh, first to open, last to close. Dr. Moore, we have run out of time, but in a one word, a yay or a nay, is, is a regional approach possible for reopening when it comes to schools or, or, or public health units in the coming weeks? So that's a Ministry of Education decision, and we'll work with them on that. I, I think a regional approach is reasonable, given that we know uh, the rates of illness have been variable across Ontario, uh, and we want the schools to stay open as uh, uh, absolutely. All right, Dr. Kieran Moore, we appreciate you taking the time to discuss with us today. We'll have you back before school start, that's for sure. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great morning. You too. 810 is your time right now. Hopefully we got your answers there. Uh, more to come. Stephanie Henry's got the answers to your traffic <laughs> woes. Good morning.